So Samsung's Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Apple's iPhone 11 Pro Max, and Google's Pixel 4 XL are among the best smartphones approaching the end of 2019. And now that I've had enough time to use and compare all of these flagships, I want to take a few minutes to discuss with you some key differences and maybe even help you decide which of these phones is right for you. So sit back, subscribe, and let's get started. Price. So for the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, at the time of this video, we are beginning to see discounted pricing as low as $800 at major retailers and similar pricing for mint condition devices on the secondhand market. This pricing alone makes the Note a great contender in this matchup. Now the iPhone 11 Pro Max starts at $1,100, and the reason I specify starts at $1,100 is because this pricing gets you a 64 gigabyte model, which probably won't cut it if you are planning on using this phone for what it's designed to do. A phone that is advertised heavily for its improved camera system paired up with a low storage capacity is not a smart move. And the woes continue with the Pixel 4 XL starting at $900 for the 64 gigabyte model and $1,000 for the 128 gigabyte model, which makes it hard for me to recommend at that price, but I'll elaborate more on that later. Now, all these phones come with fast chargers in the box, but something missing with the Pixel 4 XL is earbuds. Seriously, no earbuds? It's unlikely at this point that people have Type-C earbuds lying around their house, and Google charges you $30 to buy the Pixel Type-C earbuds separately, which don't really sound any better than the AKG earbuds that come with the Note 10 Plus and Lightning earpods that have been coming with iPhones for years. More information on shortcomings of these devices will come later in the video. Now, the next biggest thing aside from price, the screens. The Pixel 4 XL is the smallest of the trio, with the 6.3 inch bezel display. The 11 Pro Max is copying last year's iPhone with a six and a half inch notched display. And the Note 10 Plus is carrying the weight here with a 6.8 inch hole punch display. For my eyes, the Pixel 4 XL and 11 Pro Max almost have similar screen sizes considering the iPhone's notch takes up a sizable portion of the top of the display. And Google just said the heck with notches after being flamed last year for the Pixel 3 XL. I personally don't mind the larger bezel on the Pixel 4. It's easier on the eye to look at a rounded display. It just doesn't look like something that would be on a 2019 flagship device. But the Note 10 Plus is in a league of its own here with an essentially full screen display with the exception of that hole punch front facing camera, which is a much better looking solution at this point in time in my opinion. All the differences aside though, I have thoroughly enjoyed the displays on all of these devices and I can't go without mentioning the 90 hertz display on the Pixel 4 XL. While many argue it's not an essential feature to have on a phone, it is a feature that will be coming to more smartphones in 2020 and beyond and it is an absolute joy to use and interact with. Having a really fast and powerful phone paired with a fast and responsive display just makes sense and it makes perfect sense for it to be here on the Pixel paired up with with Android 10 makes the Pixel one of the cleanest user experiences you can get. Now I'm very excited to talk to you guys about the form factors of these devices, starting with the matte glass on the back of the 11 Pro Max and Pixel 4 XL. I probably love this way more than I should, but I can't get over how good the matte finish feels in the hand, and the fact that you won't see any fingerprints at all on the back of your device. I never enjoyed using smartphones with glass backs because of these two reasons, just never felt right to me holding and feeling a glass sandwich, and the fingerprints are a turnoff, so I'd always opt for putting a case or cover on my phone. With that said, the 11 Pro Max is the first phone in a long time that I'd prefer to use caseless and enjoy the premium feel it provides, alongside its stainless steel sides, which provide a very good amount of grip to counter the slippery matte design. This slippery matte does not complement the Pixel 4 as well, unfortunately due to its painted over aluminum siding, which provides much less of a grip. And in my personal testing, the official cases sold by Google don't provide great grip either they just look cool. I would recommend a case that has a solid grip, and this poetic case actually has some of that matte design as well, so you wouldn't miss out on that new feeling by throwing on a case. The Note 10 Plus's design certainly looks great as well, with the new colors and shimmers you can see when put in the right lighting. And everything about it looks and feels like a premium flagship device here at the end of 2019, but it's actually very lightweight when I prefer something that feels a bit heavier, as weird as that sounds, when handling and using such a premium device. So I will always throw a case on the Note 10 Plus to add that little extra weight to it, and I usually end up keeping a clear case on it to complement the great color and design. The 11 Pro Max is the heaviest device of this bunch, and that combined with the matte glass finish and stainless steel siding honestly makes it the best feeling and most premium smartphone I have ever felt and used. Now, another point of interest at the end of 2019 here seems to be these camera squares. And on the 11 Pro Max, I think the cameras look fine on their own, as I think the colors and design on this space gray device complement it well. But when adding 
having a case to the phone, it attracts a lot more attention to the cameras, and then I think it looks off-putting. And as far as the Pixel goes, I do not like the black camera square. In pictures, videos, and advertisements, it looks like it would go well against the white back and match the black siding, but it just feels like a major waste of space and there's not a legitimate reason to have this square on the phone. I think Apple got it right here with the open design opposed to the conspicuous black square appearance. But enough about looks and design. How do these phones actually perform in day to day? Since these are some of the best phones in the world and they all perform great in terms of speed and horsepower, I'm gonna leave aside things like iOS for versus Android and spec sheets and focus more on day-to-day -day use cases that will matter more to people rocking one of these in their pocket for years to come. So the first important factor for devices with huge and bright displays is battery life. The battery life on the 11 Pro Max is the best in the business, comfortably getting you a minimum of one and a half days of battery. We all know that we can potentially extend the batteries of these phones to a second day with limited usage and turning on battery saving settings, but you can use the 11 Pro Max to its fullest extent and easily get into that second day of usage before having to charge again. The Note 10 Plus is certainly right up there in terms of battery, with it having the largest battery of these three, but more importantly having insanely fast charging times. When you're in a pinch or forgot to charge your phone overnight, or whatever the case may be, getting 50% charge in just 20 minutes is extremely helpful in any scenario. And even though there isn't anything notable to say about the Pixel 4 XL's battery life, it should still be plenty sufficient for a user to get through a day of usage. And both the Pixel 4XL and 11 Pro Max also have fast charging capabilities, even if it isn't as quick as the super fast charging on the Note 10 Plus. Now the next feature important to many people are the cameras, but I want to preface with the fact that all of these flagship cameras are very good. They are different in their own little ways, but all very good in day-to-day -day usage. None of them will disappoint you, and you won't regret going with one of these phones over the other as far as cameras are concerned. When taking photos, the Note 10 Plus will recognize what you are shooting and make necessary adjustments to give you the best result. It will also recommend you to switch to that wide-angle lens when it makes sense to. The Pixel 4 XL has some pretty cool features that let you use your camera not just for taking photos, but for showing you information such as putting your camera up to a phone number and then being able to call that phone number straight from that screen. And the iPhone 11 Pro Max gives you a bit of preview as to what your photo would look like if you were to switch to the lens wider than the one you're currently on. This isn't a major feature or anything, but it's nice to see one of these phones use up all that space on your screen when taking photos, opposed to the black squares we're always accustomed to seeing. Now the new addition to the iPhone 11 line this year was the wide angle lens camera. And while I'm happy to see it here and an option to use, up to this point I haven't been impressed by it. It captures a lot more in the frame, which is what a lot of people may care about more, but the quality of said photos just looks worse to my eye, and I will show you a couple examples of this now. The outer parts of images will be stretched, that is to be expected on any of these wide angle lens cameras, but where other pictures seem to have a lot more clarity and no signs of a blurry appearance is not the case on the wide angle photos I've taken. Here's a side-by-side -side shot of the Note 10 Plus and iPhone 11 Pro Max using the wide angle lens in a low light setting. Pictures from Samsung devices in general will be more saturated and are given an extra flare opposed to what your subject and scenery may look like in real life, but I'm just seeing a much better photo from the wide angle lens of the Note 10 Plus here. Both having their fair share of stretching on the outer parts of the image, just the 11 Pro Max just has a slight blur, which is not present on the Note 10 Plus, and the Note 10 Plus is also picking up the minor details, like these sticks and leaves on the ground, where the 11 Pro Max just seems to say the heck with it and gives us a brown blob. Now the last camera feature I'm really excited to show you guys, which is present on all these phones, is nighttime photography. Taking photos at night is possible, and I wanted to show you guys this happening in real time to show that these phones are capable of doing, and which one does it best. When you get your camera out on your phone, and you point to an area with little to no light, it will light up the area for you and show you what your photo will look like. Now you do have to wait a few seconds and keep your camera still when taking such photos, but the results are pretty crazy. Here is this same photo from all three of the devices, and you can see the magic from a completely dark setting to having a half decent photo. Photo. When looking at all three, I think the 11 Pro Max has the best clarity and quality, even though the grass pops a bit more on the Pixel 4 XL and Note 10 Plus. I know this wasn't your typical camera test, but I wanted to show you guys some cool features and a couple shortcomings I found in day-to-day -day usage. All in all, you honestly can't go wrong with any of these cameras. Now, speakers and audio quality. After a lot of extensive side-by-side -side testing of these flagships, I found the Pixel X4 speakers to be the best of the bunch. It had the best combination of loudness, 
bass, and overall quality. Whereas the Note 10 Plus was the loudest of the three by just a hair, but it didn't sound as crisp, and the 11 Pro Max was quieter, but had more impressive bass and overall sound quality. And even though the Note 10 Plus upper speaker is basically hidden compared to the 11 Pro Max and Pixel 4 XL, phone calls are pretty loud and sound good on all three phones. And now for a quick list of shortcomings these devices have that might not or it might be deal breakers for many, but I think are still worth mentioning. The Note 10 Plus has a fingerprint sensor and the Pixel 4 XL and 11 Pro Max do not. The Pixel had a fingerprint sensor every generation until now, and I think it's something that needs to come back iPhones included. There are no headphone jacks on any of these devices, but it's excusable with the addition of earbuds coming in the box, which the Pixel 4 does not include, and Google charges you an additional $30 for them. It's ridiculous if you ask me. Next is the iPhone and Pixel storage options. Base configuration starting at 64 gigabytes needs to be a thing of the past at this point as smartphone cameras can now take higher quality photos and videos and more space is needed for it. The Note 10 Plus comes with 256 gigabytes in the base configuration and on top of that has a micro SD card slot which you can add another one terabyte of storage to your phone whereas Apple and Google want you to sign up for online storage with monthly payments. Now a major benefit of picking up a Pixel device in past years was being able to upload all of your photos and videos to Google Photos in their original quality so that this limited storage would never be an issue. Well, for whatever reason this year they decided to cancel this service and provide only high quality uploads opposed to original quality. This might not seem like that big of a deal, but you can upload high quality photos and videos from any device to Google Photos, which provides zero incentive to pick up the Pixel over other phones. Making these moves like taking away features and removing simple things out of the box just provide much less incentive to get a Pixel device when other companies are doing better and providing more for the price. So, my final verdict on these phones is this. If you are after the most premium smartphone experience with all things considered, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is without a doubt the way to go. If you want the most features out of any smartphone that exists in the world, the Note 10 Plus is your go-to, which I didn't even get to talk about the S Pen or Samsung DeX in this video. And if you want the smoothest Android slash almost iPhone-like experience, the Pixel will be your choice. It's hard for me to recommend the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL at this point in time, as most benefits of the Pixel phones are software-based and you can take advantage of this excellent software on a device more than half the price in that of a Pixel 3a. And the hardware and build of the Pixel just doesn't compare to Apple and Samsung. But what's your flagship of preference between the iPhone 11 Pro Max, Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and Pixel 4 XL? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel today. I hope to see you guys around for the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.